great hymn by Isaac Watts. Uh, here's his words. Our God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our external home. Under the shadow of your throne, your saints have dwelt secure, sufficient in your arm alone, and our defense is sure. Great words to live by in 2022. Glad that you're here, as always, something to look forward to. Uh, remember, this year, write your checks, 2022 at the end. It takes me a good month to uh, change that for me, but uh, I'm glad that you're here. And welcome those that are watching at home. I know we're gonna have a few of those here today. Um, I don't have a lot of announcements, but uh, just to let you know that Wednesday night does start this week, uh, this Wednesday at um, whatever date that is. Um, but this Wednesday, a few days from now, at 6.30 and it ends around 7.45. Um, uh, and as always, we're going to have fellowship today too, so feel free to come downstairs for warm coffee and donuts and uh, some fruit. So please, please come down for that. Um, any other announcements before we pray? Uh, I just got a real quick one. Happy anniversary, Katie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just as lovely as the day. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, again, we want to thank you and just uh, be in awe of you, Lord Jesus. We know it's cold outside, but Lord Jesus, it, your beauty is still there. I just get amazed by all the wonderful things we see and do every day, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this time. Lord, please be with those that are out and about today and those that have stayed home, Lord Jesus. Continue to bless them and keep them strong. And of course, draw close to you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this time. We lift you up in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Take your come and worship insert and follow along as we read the call to worship. You can please read in the bold print. Father, we come into this new year as pilgrims on a journey, as travelers not knowing what the road ahead may bring. But this we know. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the year that the Lord has begun. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to those who seek him. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. Let's stand together as we sing these words and song and worship the Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh, uh -huh. 
Would you please read with me a prayer of confession? God of grace, we are reminded this morning that we are dust. You know our dustiness, our brokenness, our frailties. We bring them before you this morning, trusting in you to bring forgiveness and healing. Let us now hear the good news to ourselves. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Let's stand together again. <laughs>
welcome to the new year. It has started off to be a cold one. Um, maybe a record cold one. I, I was listening um, last night, I think it was, to the weather, and they were, they were saying that it was the coldest, uh, well, not, it, it wasn't a record, but it was the coldest uh, January 1st here in Minnesota since 1979. So a little, little unusual to start off the year this way. Um, but thankfully, we we are able to. We've come into this year. The Lord has preserved us. Twenty twenty one was a challenging year, and we the Lord knows what twenty twenty two will will hold for us. But I love the fact that we've begun this year singing "Great is Thy Faithfulness," because it is in God's faithfulness that we live, and we are here today because of God's faithfulness. And there are probably more of you watching today than are here, um, which is okay, and we understand that to come out on a, on a day when it's 22 below is, is a challenge. Uh, the good news was, and if you haven't looked out, the good news is that there's, there's not really anything in the way of wind, so it is, it is calm. And I just got to say thank you for those who are here, and, and as always, and this is not surprising, it, it's always on a day like this that so oftentimes the people that are here are people that have come the farthest. So thank you. <laughs> um, but just a reminder, there are some times that we do, we really do need to, uh, we need to cancel. And uh, just to remind you of our procedure that if we cancel, if we're not meeting, uh, we post it to our Facebook site. If you have access to, to that, you go onto our Facebook page, we, we post it there. And then we also put a message on our phone. So if you can't get to Facebook or if it's easier, you just call the church number. And if the service is canceled, there will be a recording that tells you that the service is, uh, is canceled. So some folks we want to remember in, in, in prayer this morning. Um, this is a difficult, this has been a difficult season and a painful season for, for many people. And I would ask you to continue to, uh, to pray for, for, for Judy uh, Bennett and her family. Her, uh, her brother Roger's wife passed away on December 21st, and that funeral was just held uh, yesterday. So pray for uh, Roger, Roger LeBrant and, and his family. A very difficult time. His, uh, his wife, Judy's sister-in-law, from the time her illness was diagnosed until she passed was, was just five weeks. A uh, very aggressive form of, of cancer. And there are others who are, who are grieving, we, we know also at this time. We also want to be much in prayer for, for Brian Buckingham. Brian's surgery, uh, heart bypass surgery is scheduled for this Tuesday. That will be happening at the Minneapolis VA hospital, so he'd be you would remember that and pray especially for Brian on, on that day and for Sandy and the others who are will be anxiously waiting uh, through that time. Also, a, a former member of, of our, our church that um, I remain in contact with somewhat, and many of you will know uh, uh, Brian Troff, and Brian remains in uh, intensive care at St. Mary's Hospital um, in Duluth. Uh, on a ventilator with with COVID, uh, he's been he's been quite ill. He's still quite ill, stable, but uh, a long road a long road ahead a long road ahead for for Brian. We would continue uh, praying for him. May we just bow together. Father, we do come into a new year. The year changes. We look back over the past year and we can see your hand of care and protection and love and blessing. Great is your faithfulness, O oh Lord, and that does not change from day to day. You have been with us in times of great difficulty, in times of pain, in times of sorrow. You've been with us in days of joy and excitement and happiness. You have provided, you have cared. We have never been apart from your love, and for that we give you thanks. As we look now into this new year, Father, we do not know what it will bring, but you do. There will be no surprises in this year to you. So we rest in you. We rest in, in knowing that 
Although we do not know the future, we belong to the one who does. And you are a sovereign and gracious God, and your providential care will be with us in this new year. Father, we do want to bring before you those who are hurting and those who are grieving. We, we do want to pray and, and ask especially, Father, for your, your comfort for those who have lost loved ones in this season. Uh, we think of uh, Judy and her brother Roger, and we would ask, oh, Father, for your comfort and your help. Just within our, our neighborhood here, uh, around this church, uh, we think of the Betker family, Lois Betker, who some here today know, and, uh, who passed away. We ask for your help and your comfort and your encouragement to that family. And Father, we also want to bring before you the, our brother Brian Buckingham, and Lord, we pray for your hand of healing, that the grace of your healing will be upon Brian as he goes into this surgery. We pray, Father, for healing through the surgery and through his time afterwards. We just pray, Father, your blessing on Brian today for your peace and, and the filling of the Holy Spirit in his life. And Lord, we would also bring before you Brian Trofe. Lord, we pray for your healing upon him. We pray for deliverance, for recovery of health, and for your peace to be upon him and upon Pam. Lord, I'm sure there are other needs that are known to you that we are not aware of this morning. There perhaps are other members of our church family who are dealing with sickness of one kind or another. We would ask for each and every one of them, Father, for gifts of healing and the restoration of health. And now, Lord, we anticipate what you want to say to us and what you want to do in our lives as we come into this year. We open your word now and we ask for the witness of the Holy Spirit to us as we look into your word and then as we come to the Lord's table and we partake for the very first time in this new year of the bread and the cup, we meet with you, Lord Jesus. We pray, O oh Lord, that your presence will be manifested to us through these times. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to invite you to turn in your Bible to uh, Romans chapter 12. We uh, began last week a, a new series. We've just been focusing back in the fall on boldly believe the gospel, boldly follow Jesus. This, this in a sense, builds on, on that. This is uh, entitled Gospel-Shaped Relationships. And this is our second time to come into this, met, this series. And we're going to be turning to the book of Romans into chapter 12. We're going to read the first eight uh, verses. Therefore, and of course the rule, of, you know what the rule of thumb is for therefore, when you see therefore, you need to look back to see what it's there for. So when you see therefore, it means you're turning a corner, and what is now being said is based on what's gone before. And what's gone before has been Paul giving us this great exposition of why the gospel is good, good news. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us, if a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Well, last Sunday we, we began last Sunday by by laying a by laying a foundation. 
And we said, and this is just a very, very brief recap of what we saw last week. We said the gospel brings us into a shared life. And we saw from 1 Corinthians 12 that our, our life together in Christ, our life as a church family, is compared to the body. That the human body is the analogy, uh, the metaphor that Paul uses, and he compares our life together to the life of, of the body. And we saw that because we're being compared to the body, what is being emphasized is, is that just as the body has many different parts, we, we are diverse. We're, we're not all the same. We're not all the same in our personalities. We're not all the same in our life stories. And we're not all the same in our, in our abilities, natural abilities. And we're not all the same in our spiritual giftings. We are diverse. And we are interdependent. There, the idea of a solitary Christian who's just, it, it's just, it's just me and God and, and, and that's all I need, that's totally foreign to, to the New Testament, both to the teaching that Jesus gave directly to the disciples and certainly to us in, in the letters that we have to, to the churches. We, we are interdependent. The body, going back to that analogy, our human bodies are, are interdependent. There's all kinds of systems within our bodies for you and I to be living and breathing and being here today. There's all kinds of systems that are working in an interdependent way. And Paul, as we saw in 1 Corinthians 12, just puts it in a very humorous way. Uh, you know, can the hand say, can the hand say, I don't need the head? Can the foot say, I don't need the ear? Well, of course not. We, we, our body is independent, and, and we are in, interdependent. We need each other. I need you, and you need me. And that's how the body works. And then our unity, our unity, which is a very important emphasis for us in, in our life together, our unity is from our shared life. We share life together. Our unity doesn't come from sameness. Our unity doesn't come because we all necessarily think alike or that we all necessarily agree on everything. But we share life together. Now, what do we mean by gospel-shaped relationships? The title of this series. What do we mean by gospel-shaped relationships? We mean that we are who we are because of Christ. We, and we are who we are because of Christ, and that shapes how we live. Because of who we are in Christ, that shapes how we live. Now, this is a very important truth. And if you want to understand kind of the big picture of these great letters to the churches of, of Romans and Ephesians and Colossians,